Hey everybody, welcome back to Ursa Minor Sewing, and in this part of our round cage crinoline, we are working on constructing the uh, bottom bag portion of the crinoline. So let's uh, hop on over to the sewing machine and have a look at how this is done. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is sew all of our side edges together. and turn this all into one long strip, but you don't want to turn it into a circle just yet. Line up our clip marks. And you got to make sure that the uh, markings that we made are on the are together. That's the right side of the fabric. Okay. Now that we've got that all pinned together, we're gonna run it through the sewing machine. And the seam allowances that calls for are half inch. And on your sewing machine, that's the uh, third or second mark from the needle. that half an inch all the way around. I'm just going to go off camera and get the other edge done. So I've sewn all of my seams together. Now I'm going to give them press to one side and then I'm going to zigzag over the pressed edge uh, to keep them to the one side so that uh, putting the boning in will be easier. The next thing that we need to do now is fold this whole thing in half and sew along the top edge. And you want to leave about six inches from either end so that you can sew this together afterwards. Just turn right side out and press.
Now I've got this turned inside out, you have to press this edge, this seam edge up here. When you're trying to press it, just kind of roll it back and forth between your fingers, and that'll make your stitch line pop up more so that you have a better fold when you press this down. All right, so after you've pressed the edges, you now need to take the ends, open ends of the bag and you're going to pin the sides together and make a seam out of that. So, um, something else I did off camera was I took the open sections and I pressed down half an inch on both sides. This will make it easier to stitch up later. All you're going to do is take it, the right side is the side with the um, stripes on it, and fish all the way down here to the other end, and you're going to open it like this, take this open corner, open corner with the stripes and match it up to the other open corner with the stripes and pin it just like that make sure to pin at your notches great thing about the fabric being slightly transparent and having carried your lines all the way to the edge you can use them as pinning guides. So there it is all pinned. I'm going to run it through the machine now. Okay. Once you've done that you're going to flip it to the inside, just like that. Side for it to be on. Press it down. So that's what I'm going to do off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got this seam all nice and pressed down. And I also, while I was off camera, marked uh, four inches either side of this seam because uh, these marks that I put on here are going to be where I'm going to start sewing. Uh, the boning channels. You want that uh, space so that you can get the bonings in afterwards. Uh, this seam that we just sewed is now our center front of the bag and then this what I did also was marked where my center back was. And you're going to need this for later because then we got to mark where all of our um, supports, or support ribbons are going to go. So I'm going to run this through the machine and get these boning channels taken care of. So I figured I'd just give you guys a quick peek at what I'm doing here. I've got my stitch line here where we marked where the boning channel is going to go and I'm keeping it right in between uh, these two forks of the presser foot. You'll see that there's a slot right there in the middle. I'm just keeping that right in the middle 
and my needle is hitting it pretty much bang on. Um, I'm not pinning this because I really don't think I need to, but if you're more comfortable with sticking pins in to keep everything uh, where you need it to be, that's fine and ducky. You go ahead and do that. I'm going to finish all these channels off and I will be right back. Okay, so here's everything all sewn up and pressed out. After you've got it sewn, you want to give it a nice steam and press out so that the uh, the stitching uh, relaxes into the fabric and, the re and of course the fabric accepts the stitching, otherwise it's going to look all puckery and nasty. Uh, the last thing we have to do on here now is mark where the ribbons are going to go. So, um, in the directions it says starting from center back, which is what I've got here. Uh, and working for the front, first we're going to mark on either side of this pink line here, uh, seven and a half inches. I'm going to mark down here. And then I'll mark over here at the 15. And then from every point after that, you're going to mark 15 inches. So I'm going to move this down. Okay, so that takes us to that there pivot. That's it. We're done with the bag. So that's it for this portion of the round cage crinoline. We've worked with the bag for as far as we can go for now. In the next video we're going to work on the ribbons and possibly even the bones. So hope to see you all then and until then happy sewing! <laughs>